everyone. Welcome back to Crafting at Whimsy Wonderland. My name is Stacy. Today I am going to be jumping on to the Altered Book um, bandwagon, I guess you could call it. And I got these three books at the Dollar Tree. And if you'll notice, they're a little bit different sizes, different thicknesses. And I did that on purpose. Um, I've not made any of these stacked book uh decor pieces before but I have some tall shelves that need some little risers on them and I thought these books would be a good way to do that so I just went ahead and kind of got an assortment I also got some interesting shaped or interesting sized books for another project but I'm going to start with this one and what I like about this one is it's all white already all I'm really going to have to mess with is the spine and then this one's gray and black. I liked that color combo. And I liked the texture of these books as well. Some people will just buy uh, paperback books and tear off the covers and go from that. But I don't like that look as well as I like this painted, more polished, finished look. So I'm going to be doing this a little bit different than I've seen it done anywhere else. But we are going to start by uh, painting out the spine edges of these books. I don't think I'm going to worry about painting the bottom of this book, so I'm going to go ahead and mask it off. It's a, it's a nice solid black color, so I just don't see the point in painting the whole thing. So I'm just going to mask this so that I get a decent line and it doesn't look horrible. But I do need to um, I do need to paint the edges, so I'm going to go ahead and mask those as well. And just by masking it, I will save some paint, and paint is hard to find right now um, with the pandemic and everything going on. It's like that's one of the supplies that's really difficult to come by for crafting. So I don't want to paint all these bits and pieces of the book that I don't actually need to paint. Okay, don't want to waste my supplies. I could just freehand and eyeball it, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> Um, I guess the way I masked this is not good because I need to get the edge of this as well. Oops. Okay, so once you have it masked the way you like it, you're good to go. Now the rest of the books are going to be stacked on top of this one, so I don't think it's going to be that important to mask them because you won't see them, but you will see the bottom of this one when you pick it up. Whew, sorry about that. Dropped my tape dispenser. <laughs> I scared the dog too. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to open this up. Just splitting my pages in half and opening up the book so I have a flat work surface. I'm going to take just a couple of pieces of regular pa printer paper and stick inside of there so I don't get paint all over the pages that don't need it. All right, on this second book, I am just going to try this and see how it works. I'm just rubbing with my finger some spackle over the top of the embossing on the spine. Just in an attempt to smooth it out a little bit. But once this is dry, I'm gonna have to take some sandpaper to it. I can still see the wording but I can't feel it as much. Okay, so 
let's paint this and see how that works. Cover it. Uh oh, it does a great job. Okay, so we definitely want to hit that with some spackle. All right, this book doesn't need much in the way of paint because it's already white. So there's an idea for you if you're looking for an easy way to buy a book that's already the color you want it. So all you have to do is paint the spine. And now I wish I had bought three of these books because that would make my project a lot faster. Okay, this one's basically done. All right, now this one, I'm going to go ahead and add a little sparkle to. This one. I'm going to steal the papers from this since that didn't need all that. Now with this one, I am going to just paint this black part. I'm just playing with different textures and colors and stackings and whatnot, and I'm thinking since this is a nice gray that that ought to be good. So I'm just going to paint the binding strip that's black with the white. It might have been nice to have painted it black as well and then had alternating colors. Or I could have painted all of the spines black and use white letters. That would work too. I'm going to set this one aside to dry. All right, now I'm getting out my truffle chalk paint from Waverly. And I'm going to put just a little into the middle piece of my, or section of my palette. And actually, I think I'm going to do one more. I've got three books to do. Okay. I'm going to make sure I have paper towels nearby. For crafting, I like the paper towels that are the tiny little sections, <laughs> like a half a paper towel. And now into this truffle, I'm going to mix a little bit of water. I'm kind of making a stain because I'm wanting this to be almost just a tea stain. I'm going to wipe off my brush because there could be extra paint in the bristles from stirring that. If you don't want to worry about that, you could use a popsicle stick or craft stick or whatever to stir. Now, I'm going holding my book closed. I'm going to paint this on to the pages. And it is soaking it in. Oh my goodness. A lot more than I thought it would. This has a dot on it because this book was from Target originally. So I'm sure they were marking it so it couldn't be returned for full price at the store. Okay. Now that I see how this is working, you could do this with gold paint. 
and have a gilded book, that would be really pretty. But I've already started with the brown, so I'm going to finish with the brown. Just trying to tea stain it a little bit. If it's too dark, I can go in and water down some plaster colored paint and brush over the top. But I'm going to go ahead and paint this on and then see how I like it. And I am making sure to get the edges of the cover as well. Oh. Don't worry if that happens because this is our top book and I have something special that's going to happen to it. So I wanted my books to say a grateful heart is a happy heart. So I went ahead and I just printed that out on my printer using different fonts. For my size books, I use the 72, size 72 for the lettering. And now I'm just trimming them a little bit. And I'm going to just decoupage these on. Now, I could use my vinyl cutter and cut vinyl letters, but I just don't want to mess with it. <laughs> I'm going to Mod Podge the, the edges anyway to seal the book's spines so I just thought might as well just Mod Podge these on as well. Okay so I need to get my books and uh, decide how big to cut these. So this is my first book it's going to be on the bottom it's the biggest so this is the one that needs to say is a happy heart so I'm going to or happy heart I guess it's not is a it's just so I justified them all to the right. So if I use this edge as my lining up point, then those will be perfectly placed on there. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and Mod Podge those on. I've got my Mod Podge and I'm going to grab a brush and I'm going to put Mod Podge on the entire spine. Okay. I'm not going to open this book up and lay it flat to do this one um, because I want it to fold around the edge of the book the way it's gonna, going to sit on there. So I'm lining up my right side because I right justified it on the printer and just centering the word words on there okay and I'm going to take my scissors so I'm just going to trim that down to fit and then I'm going to take a little more Mod Podge and under the side of it here stick down that paper And this should curve down into the, the formation of the spine. Okay. And I need to do the same thing on the other side. Push it down in there. And then I'm going to go over the entire thing with my Mod Podge. I'm not going to go over the entire book, just this paper I'm putting on. I'm going to set this over on another table, just sitting up just like that so that the Mod Podge can dry without being messed up. This is the top book. And I'm thinking, I was thinking backwards when I printed these. Um, so this might be a little too big. Nope, I think we can make it work. Okay, same process. I'm going to go ahead and do this top one now so it has a few minutes to dry because I want to do something special to the front of this book. So I'm just painting the Mod Podge on the spine first. Okay, so it 
it's going to lay this way. I don't know why I care about which direction the words are inside. It's not like you're going to see them. Okay, so I lined up. I didn't do a very good job of lining that up. Lining up the edge of the paper to the edge of the spine and then smoothing down my words. Okay, then I'm going to take my scissors. And trim. And then I've got to do Mod Podge under this edge to get that edge down. I like the farmhouse look, but to me, farmhouse does not have to be all black and white. It just needs to be simple. All right, I'm going to set this aside to dry, and once all of these are completely dry, then we'll come back and do the next step. All right, remember I said I was going to do something special with the front of the top book? Well, I'm going to decoupage some pretty paper on it, and so I've kind of just put it on top and measured a little mark about where it needs to be cut. I just laid it on top and rubbed where the book edge was. <laughs> it might need some fine tuning, but this will get me started. So I've got the book that's a grateful heart and this is going to go onto the front cover. I need to trim it just a teensy weensy little bit on the length. Just the teensiest weensiest little bit. That should do it. And I'm going to have it go to the edge. And then just wherever it lands over here will be perfectly fine. So with my book closed, making sure that my binding is facing up so I've got the right side of the book, I'm going to add some Mod Podge. I like to add it to the piece and to the paper. That way, if I missed any spots on one, I'm sure to have it on the other. Plus, this gives this a minute to get tacky, and then it just really grabs on to that fresh, wet glue. It just, I just have way better luck when I do it this way. Except for I got it all over my counter, and I don't want that. All right. Now, I'm going to line up the edges. And if it doesn't go exactly to the edge, I'm okay with that because that's why I distressed it. Okay. And I'm going to push it down, pressing as hard as I can. And I'm going to grab my brayer tool and roll it so that I get rid of all of the air bubbles. And I like to roll it in every which direction. <laughs> now, it looks like I don't quite have enough Mod Podge over here on the edge. It's kind of sticking up a little. So we're going to fix that. And I'm just going to push down really hard with my brush and seal that edge. And then I'm going to go over the entire top piece of the paper making sure to seal it to the book cover. A little more Mod Podge and I'm going to just take my brush strokes 
all the way down in a straight line. And that's just going to give me a nicer looking finish when it dries. Alright, now I need to let this dry completely, so I'll be back to show you the next step. Okay, so I've stacked my books and I'm thinking I'm going to use this uh, buffalo check ribbon. And I need to make a bow and I'm thinking I'm just going to make a junk bow. So I'm going to kind of look and see how long I need this to be. And I'm thinking about this length, just judging by the size of my book. You judge by the size of your book. Okay, and then I'm going to angle my corners. And this is going to be my base. And then I'm going to cut a piece of the buffalo check because that's like the feature ribbon that I'm going to be using. <laughs> Sorry, I've got a lot of stuff here. I fold it in half and then I fold it in half again. And then I just angle my corners to be fishtailed. And the way I make my junk bows is each ribbon piece needs to be a tiny bit smaller than the ribbon before it. Let's get some orange in here. You want to have all different widths for interest. I'm going to go ahead and put two of this orange in here because it's so skinny compared to the rest. And the same with the yellow. I'm going to cut two. Now, the idea behind the junk bow is that you can use up any little scrap of ribbon that you have. So whenever I end up with a little piece of ribbon left over that's like three or four inches long, doesn't seem like you can do anything with it, junk bows are the way to go with those. So keep those things piled up in a box and when you have enough pieces together to coordinate something, then go for it. Now I have this burlapy stuff. <laughs> I'm going to actually cut three of these. This came from the clearance bin at Hobby Lobby years ago. It's kind of like a burlap ribbon. It's really coarse. And this one I'm just going to angle the ends. I'm not going to fishtail it. You decide what you like. And they're going to go in here. And then I'm going to cut a couple pieces of brown to go in here. And then I love to use lace in my junk bows. I don't put a lot in, but just enough to say, hey, I'm here. <laughs> so just one piece of that. Layer it in there and then since my feature ribbon is going to be the black gingham, I have this piece. <laughs> I might as well use it. Black buffalo check, gingham, plaid, whatever you want to call it. It's got so many different names. All right. I think that's going to do it. And then I'm going to grab my jute and I'm just going to gather up all these pieces, trying to get them all going the same direction first. And I'm just going to start pinching it all together. Now you can tie this with a pipe cleaner. Totally works as well actually a little easier with a pipe cleaner but then you have to cover your pipe cleaner a little and that's a little harder to do so you decide which way you want to do it all right and then I usually just pull
pull my ribbons. I didn't quite get that in the center. If you didn't get it in the center, just adjust it. It's not a big deal. The way you can check is by folding it in half and see. Okay. And just pull your ribbons every which way to get them to look nice. I always start with the back pieces because they're biggest. And my bigger pieces usually have wire in them, which these do. My smaller pieces don't always. I use a lot of small ribbon that doesn't have a wire in it because it's softer and sometimes lends itself to just being nicer when you start to work with stuff. So fluff these all out. Make sure you bring forth the prominent one that you want to see the most. I'm going to So I'm going to bring my ribbon around. Tie it. This is a flannel ribbon. It came from Walmart last year at Christmas. They had some left over after Christmas, so I bought it up. It's wire edged. I really like it, and the flannel is just fun. Um, because it is flannel, it is one sided, so I have to twist and manipulate the bow to get it to be what I want it to be. All right, fluff those pieces out again so you see all the prettiness. and then it will get glued on top of my books. Okay, get this ribbon out of the way. I've already cut the strap to go around and I'm making it go to the side of the words. So you don't have to do this part, but I want these books to be solid. So I am going to glue them together so when you pick it up it doesn't just come apart on you. And I am bringing all of the spines to be flush. Now that means the back is not and that's okay. All right, now I want my bow to go up here in the corner, not down over here. So I'm going to wrap and glue. my finger protection to glue it down and then I'm gonna pull it whoops once that's glued down and secure I'm gonna pull it pretty tight and I'm gonna cut that a little bit shorter and this side didn't get enough glue to put glue across there and glue it down. I want to make sure that that glue is or that that ribbon is on there securely. Then I can take my bow and figure out which way I want it to go. Now these uh, 
jute strings. You can clip them off or you can leave them hanging. It's up to you. If I had tied the bow in, st in the middle here with jute instead of uh, buffalo check, I would have left the strings hanging. But I think this bow has all the colors that are in here except the green. I'm kind of out of green ribbon. I need to get some more. All right, so I'm going to glue my bow down on top of this gluey mess here. Make sure that that bottom one is exactly where you want it because that's the one that's getting glued down. The others can be moved around a little bit after it hardens. All right. That's so cute. All right, there you have it. This is my take on the stacked altered farmhouse books. I am planning on using this on my uh, shelf when I display my fall items this year as I can set something up here like a little pumpkin or um, a cute little farm truck would be cute up on there. <laughs> so this will just really give me a creative, pretty riser to display items on. Let me know what you're thinking of this project in the comment section below. Is this something you would do? Do you prefer the look where they take the covers off of a paperback book and paint those pages? Um, if that's a little scruffier, a little messier. Or do you like the hardback look? And I do like the edges being painted brown instead of just left all white. Okay. So let me know what you're thinking and what you would do if you made these for yourself. And what saying would you use? There's so many beautiful sayings out there for fall and Thanksgiving. And... All right, there you have it. This is my take on the stacked altered farmhouse books. I don't like the look of it all being just plain white and every book looking exactly the same. So I left the gray on this one so that it would show and give a little bit of texture. Uh, I might even leave on my next one, I might even leave the books exactly the way they are and just paint the spines. So we'll see. But anyway, let me know what you're thinking. Do you like the look of all three of the books looking exactly the same? Do you like the look of the paperback books where they just tear off the cover and paint those front pages and the spine? That way it's a little scruffier. Um, anyway, I like this. I think it's just pretty with that extra little paper on the top. And it'll make a really cute little riser for displaying my fall things this year on my shelves in the living room. Let me know what you're thinking and what colors you would do if you made these. If you like this project, please give it a thumbs up. That helps my channel to grow and leave a comment and let me know what you're thinking. All right, this has been Crafting at Whimsy Wonderland. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next time.